Now you trying to handle his shit now. I'm the fucking you champ. Ain't a loud mouth you ain't a fucking. That's what I'm saying. Boy, keep you bark like a dog. Get your tickets I'm now. Like a dog. Come you through. can't bite. Be here. Fuck March you 4th. Cause you know what, Watch nigga? Shut like you say, up, nigga. Man. Bitch ass nigga. You from your knees, bitch. Let's see, let's, see how, let's see how he talks when his son is laying out on a blue mat. My son will fuck you up. He gonna fuck you up. He gonna try, bro. I know that. He gonna try, bro. I know he gonna try, bro. My nigga. I know he gonna try, he bro. He gonna finish it. You gonna pay this. I know he gonna try, Don't turn bro. the fucking mic off. But this is the time he's gonna turn fail. Turn the fucking mic off. This is the time he's gonna uh, fail. Listen, listen, young This fuck. is the fight that you ain't supposed to be fighting. Let me tell you something, young man. Let me tell you something, bitch ass nigga. nigga. Listen, yeah. bitch. Okay. You getting fucked up. What up, fight world? It's the mighty mean Joe Frazier. You are now listening to... Fist Physics. Today we're going to talk about the Danny Swift Garcia Keith One Time Thurman fight going down at the Barclays Center March 4th, 2017, with the WBC and WBA welterweight belts on the line. First off, just taking a look at Danny Garcia real quick. It's official, Angel Garcia. Danny's father, is officially banned from all further press conferences for this fight after he was accused of being a racist. Putting some racist comments out there. And I really think that the media spun it in a very negative way. Listen, man, just addressing, before we even get into looking at the fight, just talking about Angel Garcia and his comments. There's a difference between a racist person any street person. I would lean, when we're talking about Angel Garcia, I would lean towards a street person. He didn't mean anything that he said in a negative racist way. I mean, he meant what he said in a negative way, but it had nothing to do with racism or anything like that. With that said, let's continue on looking at Danny Swift Garcia. 33 and 0 with 19 KOs. Um, he was originally the WBA super lightweight champion for quite a while. He's 28 years of age, currently ranked at welterweight. He's standing at 5 foot 8, 68 inch reach, and he's a Philly fighter. Last three fights, he's two knockouts, one unanimous decision. Now moving on over to Keith one time Thurman, who seems like he, he's actually showing a lot of poise throughout uh, all of the verbal harassment that was going on coming from Angel Garcia and he seems like he's been taking it really as a good sport proud of him we're just going to take a look at his record real quick Keith is actually 27 and 0 22 knockouts he's 28 years of age 5 foot 7 69 inch reach hailing from Clearwater Florida his last three were Sean Porter Colazzo and Guerrero and he went 12 rounds with each one of these fighters now, when I first heard about this matchup, surprisingly, I thought it was a pretty bad deal for one time Thurman. Um, f for the hardcore boxing fans, you have to admit, you know, Danny has fought the tougher competition. If you just was to take a, a, a brief look, look at his resume, you would see that Danny has fought more names, uh, tougher competition. But the thing about Danny is, Danny has. If the fight is close, or even if you're out boxing Danny, Danny is going to be awarded the decision. And, I mean, from a promoter standpoint, you could kind of understand why. I'm not going to get into that today, but you can kind of understand why Danny has been blessed. Um, going into this fight, I'm going to say that this is Danny's fight to lose. I pretty much see him... Winning all scorecards, or maybe even if if it's even like maybe a split decision or something like that. But as long as Danny Garcia is on his feet at the end of the night, I'm probably about ninety eight percent sure he's going to walk away with with the decision. Now this fight is Keith's to win, but I do not think that Keith Thurman can win a decision. I, I just don't. You know, we're in New York, we're in the, you know, even though Keith is a Florida fighter, which is technically the East Coast. It's going to be a lot of uh, Puerto Rican fans in the house. It's going to be a lot of people who drove up from Philly, Jersey, you know, 
real Danny Garcia supporters are going to be uh, in that arena that night. And I just think that this is an uphill battle for Keith Thurman. Now, if, if you've been really following boxing and really watching the careers of these two, it's one thing, I think maybe it won't stand out, but after I point it out, you might be able to make some sense of it. But that's the fact that we're dealing with two totally different fighters here. Keith Thurman is a heavy body puncher. He goes to the body. He, he tends to break a guy down. And usually the guys will, I'm not going to say quit, but they just due to the amount of punishment that they're taking on the body, when Keith brings, his, brings it up, it's just too much. And usually these, these guys will melt, they'll fade, and... You know, he just wins the decision. Well, lately it's been a decision, but when he was actually knocking guys out, I saw more of a grind. You know, he's working, he's going to the body, he's breaking your body down, and soon your legs are going to go. It's totally opposite, in my opinion anyway, on the Danny Swift Garcia side. And a lot of people have gone the distance with Danny. Some, you could say, have beat Danny. Some have legitimately lost. But I think... What you really need to take notice of the fact is Danny will test your chin. You know, if you're going to fight an inside fight, and usually even if you want to talk about the guys who, who a lot of people felt beat Danny and were robbed, these were longer guys who used the distance to outbox Danny. I haven't seen a fight where somebody is up close on Danny Garcia all night, all 12 rounds, and... That that you know what I'm saying, I just haven't seen a fight like that where I felt like, you know what? They 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 robbed the opponent. Danny Garcia didn't deserve that win. If Keith Thurman comes in the way that he fought Sean Porter, then he loses. I just don't see any way that you're gonna beat Danny Garcia fighting like that. And I'm talking about on the cards. But also, Danny has the faster hands, which is interesting too, because Keith did a, a, a statement, I think it was uh, with Fight Hype maybe, where he said that he had the quicker hands. And I'm thinking to myself, like, bro, be honest. I mean, Danny is a, is, is a couple of fractions all uh, uh, faster than you. His reaction time seems like it's a lot better. The velocity of his punches actually come at a faster speed than you do. And when Danny catches guys with that big left hook on the chin, a lot of guys fall down. Now, you can, you can argue with me the point that, you know, well, hey, Keith Thurman, you know, he's really a 154 who fights at 147. But at this point, Danny Garcia has really outgrown the 147. He can make 147, but he's not 147. So I don't think it's going to be too much of a size difference here. Even when we look at the arm length and the height, these guys are almost virtually the same size with maybe a fraction of an inch difference. Which means from a Keith Thurman standpoint, I don't see him going in there and boxing, which is what he needs to do. He needs to fight a Lamont Peterson fight. Straight up. That's the fight that he needs to go in there with. But at the same time, if you were to sit down and look at Lamont Peterson's dimensions, his arms are a lot longer. And he's a lot more experienced than a Danny Garcia. Lamont is, I believe, up in his 30s, but he's fought some really good competition, win or lose. He's no slouch, and he can box his ass off. But Keith does not have those natural abilities, and I just think it's going to be a bad night for him, man. I think it's going to be a real bad night for Keith Thurman. So, I mean, if you haven't already dis already figured it out, I'm leaning towards Danny Swift Garcia, who is the underdog, who I might actually be tempted to put a couple of dollars on, because I'm like about 75% sure that he walks away with the win somehow, some way. And, and you know what? I've counted Danny Garcia out in the past for years, you know what I'm saying? I mean, I didn't feel like he beat Eric Morales the first time, you know what I'm saying? I mean, there's a lot of times where I counted the kid out, but one thing that I can, I can say about Danny Garcia is he'll do anything to win. And if you really was watching, he'll do anything to win. You go back and you check out that Lucas Matisse fight. I'm not even going to bring up nothing because, you know, it was a couple of years back. Nobody really talks about it. I'm not going to start talking about it here, but if you go and you really watch that fight and you see what Danny's doing, it's a miracle that, you know, uh, the ref didn't disqualify the kid. 
But he proved to me right there that he's willing to do whatever it takes to hold on to his O and to hold on to whatever belt he has. Um, and I'm also against Angel Garcia being banned from these press conferences because, like I said, Angel was not speaking out of racism. Angel was speaking out of ignorant hood bullshit. You know what I'm saying? So, I mean, you can get mad at that, but you know what? This is This is no other sport. This is not basketball or baseball or football i don't mind profanity and you know some people came to me and said you know we have what the kids are watching how many small children are being allowed to stay up and watch a boxing match because you know what honestly this is no other sport other sports come on at five o'clock six o'clock seven o'clock eight o'clock actually relatively early if you're a big boxing fan you know damn well these fights don't start till 11 o'clock midnight almost damn near midnight sometimes so honestly if your kid is too young to hear any profanity they should actually be sleep in the bed this is not the, the and, and this is the, a violent sport okay this is the sport where violence prevails this is maybe not the sport that small children should really actually be watching unless they have dreams and aspiring to be fighters themselves. So I, I really wasn't against all of the uh, profanity used and some of the slang terms used by Angel Garcia. I actually thought that it made the press conference very interesting because Danny's actually pretty quiet. And Keith, he, he talks a little ish. But it's it's he's no Adrian Broner or anything like that. I mean, and you had to sell this fight. You had to sell this fight because this fight. Oh, and I forgot to tell you guys too. This fight is going down on CBS. So I want this fight to do well. I want there to be a lot of talk about this fight because this is one of the first major fights, not only of the year, but it's big to have it on a free network channel. Usually, this stuff comes on HBO, Showtime, pay per view. Even at ESPN, I mean, I'm pretty sure just about everybody who lives in the States has channels 2 through 11. So that means that everybody will have the opportunity to check out Danny Garcia versus Keith One Time Thurman. And I'm also going to go on the record and saying this. If Danny pulls off this win in a devastating fashion, he wins by knockout. You know what I'm saying? Or he wins by a lopsided decision. I could definitely see the money man, Floyd Mayweather, coming out of retirement to take on Danny Garcia. Even though he's been saying that he wasn't and, you know, he needs the nine figures, whatever it is that his price is. You'll get that from the networks having a big fight like that in September. One. Two. Danny's of the right ethnic background. He'll bring in a huge demographic for the full fight like that. Three, a lot of people will count Floyd out because he's been retired and inactive for, what, about a year or so? Maybe actually a little bit more? But in all reality, if you watch the Lamont Peterson fight, you know that a Floyd Mayweather fight for Danny Garcia is a, is a definite loss. I mean, but it's Floyd Mayweather. He's beat everybody. So a loss to Floyd Mayweather doesn't count for anything. All right, fight fans, I'm on my ground. I'm going to break down some more. Stay tuned. I'm going to try to keep you guys uh, updated on what's going on with this fight. want to get it out there. want to promote it. Like I said, it's one of the biggest free fights that they've made available on network television. And I want to see it do good. I want to see it do have big numbers. And just comparing to a horrible last year where, you know, people were barely breaking uh, 400,000 buys. You had the Sergey Kovalev. Andre Ward fight, which did horribly on the pay-per-view side, it did 156,000 buys. Those are horrible numbers, horrible numbers. So, I mean, I'm hoping that going to network TV, two big stars who are going to battle it out, and probably what's going to be a, a tough fight for, for both guys, I think this is beautiful. All right, it's the Mighty Mean Joe Frazier. Tune in to the next one. One.